Good morning and welcome back. So downtown set up to honor loved ones who have passed away. Muertos Fest continuing today starts at noon. It goes till 9 p.m. at Hemisphere. It is San Antonio's largest Dia de los Muertos Festival and was previously named one of the seven best fall festivals across the United States by National Geographic. And like we've been saying, if you didn't make it out yesterday, you can still visit all the altars on display today. Parking is limited, so people are encouraged to use ride share. You can bike or walk if possible. And here's the thing, if you're not able to make it out there today, you can still see all the beauty. We have a special broadcast, all the festivities. It's going to be Wednesday, 8 to 10 p.m. right here at KSAT 12, or you can watch it online at KSAT.com or anywhere you stream us. And Sarah, like we've been saying, we're starting off kind of mean and muggy, but you're saying if people are going out in the afternoon, bring a jacket. Yeah, and I'm a little concerned about all of those altars and things out there because it's going to get windy later on today. So there, it's going to be a very rude awakening for the weather change this afternoon. Winter is going to come with a fury today. So let's go ahead and take a look at the weather headlines. Here's what you need to know. It's in the 70s right now, but temperatures will fall into the 50s this afternoon, eventually into the 40s and then all day tomorrow. It is also going to get pretty windy. Winds tonight will gust up to 40 to 45 miles per hour. And then as far as rain goes, we will see some rain, especially tonight and tomorrow. Uh, now, most of it will be light, not accumulating to too much, but it is going to create damp conditions out there tonight and during the day tomorrow. Tomorrow is just going to be one of those cold, damp days outside that you're going to want to spend indoors as much as possible. Here's a look at the weather setup. There's where the front is right now uh, working its way through central Texas. Notice how there's rain behind the front. So as this front moves through San Antonio, that's not when our main rain chance is going to be. Our main rain chance is going to be after the front moves through tonight and tomorrow. Also notice that there's some ice across parts of the panhandle. We're not expecting ice in San Antonio, so no need to worry there. But this is just a testament to how cold this air mass is. It's 28 degrees in Amarillo, 34 in Lubbock. 48 right now in Dallas front has yet to move through Junction, but it's on the doorstep of Junction. And let me go ahead and take you through the future temperatures. We're going to go hour by hour here. Uh, so uh, right now at about seven o'clock, that front will be uh, closer to Junction and Fredericksburg moving through Fredericksburg and the Kerrville area by about nine o'clock. Temperatures in Kerrville are going to be dropping down into the fifties as early as 11 o'clock. It's still going to be warm in San Antonio at 11 o'clock, but by about noon, that front is going to be working its way through Bear County, northern Bear County first to southern Bear County. Still going to be in the upper 70s by noon in San Antonio, but mid 50s in the Hill Country. New Braunfels will likely see the front by 1230 as well. Then as we head into the early afternoon, that's when the front is going to move through San Antonio. Temperatures will drop down into the 60s by three o'clock. It's still going to be warm, though, near Catula and Beeville in the 80s. Then that front is going to be moving through our, our coastal communities by the evening hours and in the evening that's when temperatures are really going to fall in San Antonio. By dinner time it's going to be in the 50s in San Antonio and by the late evening temperatures will be falling into the 40s in the Alamo City, 30s in the Hill Country. As we look ahead to early tomorrow morning temperatures will be in the 40s and they're going to stay in the 40s all day long tomorrow, potentially even in the upper 30s, low 40s up in the Hill Country. Country. It is going to be a cold day tomorrow with a wind from the north. Wind chills are going to be in the 30s. Let me talk about those winds here for a second. That front moving through San Antonio getting the early afternoon. Now for most of the afternoon today, we could see gusts up to 30, 35 miles per hour. Not too bad. It's tonight though that wind gusts could happen up to about 40 to 45 miles per hour through early tomorrow morning. So please take some time right now during the Good Morning America to make sure your uh, Halloween decorations are tied down because it's going to get very, very windy. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at rain chances. Rain chances increasing late tonight. Some light rain possible for us overnight tonight and early tomorrow. So let me just summarize everything with our KSAT 12 hour forecast around noon. It's going to be 77, so still warm in San Antonio around noon, one o'clock. That front rolls through close to two. It 
gets windy, temperatures drop, gusts up to about 25 to 30 miles per hour. Only isolated rain during the day today, but we see those rain chances really pick up tonight. Temperatures falling late tonight into the 40s. Showing you the seven day forecast here. Take a look at tomorrow's forecast. We are going to be in the 40s all day long with light rain and windy conditions. Wind chills are going to be in the 30s, so please bundle up tomorrow. Now here's the good news. Tuesday, it's still going to be chilly, 55 degrees, but things will be clearing so that trick or treating forecast looks pretty good for the kids. You're just going to want to bundle them up. And then last thing I'll note, Wednesday morning in San Antonio, we're going to get down to 36, but up in the hill country, I think they could have their first light freeze of the season, Max. So some things to keep in mind. I'll have more details on that trick or treating forecast coming up in the next half hour. Ooh, more than 20 degree swing today. Absolutely a huge temperature difference. I'm going to I'm excited about shaking up my wardrobe though, Max. Yeah, that's just me. Um, I hate the cold. So tomorrow <laughs> I'm already like I'm premeditatively miserable. Time yeah. now, it's 17, <laughs> 75 degrees. All right, we have so many sports to talk about. We're going to start with college football though. UTSA undefeated in the month of October. Texas keeping those playoff hopes alive. And Texas A&M getting in the win column. We have all the highlights next. Frank Harris and the UTSA football team welcoming East Carolina to the Alamo City yesterday afternoon. The Roadrunners accomplishing their goal of staying undefeated in the brand new conference. So Harris connecting with Taiki Ogle. Kellogg, wait for it. I mean, 43 yard touchdown. One of two touchdowns Taiki had in the game. Harris throwing for 395 yards. The Roadrunners outgaining the East Carolina Pirates 515 to 366. UTSA, I mean, look at this. Beautiful. Look at that cohesion. They win 41 27, finishing the month 4 0. Harris, though, and the team still not completely satisfied. You know, we're not really satisfied. Like I said, uh, the mood in the locker room wasn't what you would have thought after a win. Uh, so we got to watch the film, get better from, from it, and uh, get ready for next week. We're getting better. We're getting better. You know, we're a better football team today than we were yesterday. Now, we took quite a few injuries tonight, so we'll have to re realign some folks, and that, that always slows down the progress a little bit, but nobody's healthy this time of year. And uh, these are where the real games start. Speaking of the real games, the seventh ranked Texas Longhorn keeping their college football playoff hopes alive. Look at this, taking on BYU and this man, Xavier Worthy, possible first round pick, weaving in and out of traffic, and will he go all the way? Yes, he will. All right, it was electric. No Quinn Hewers, so redshirt freshman Malik Murphy making his debut. Murphy ripping it. Ah, a Donnie Mitchell, beautiful 30-yard score, and Texas cruises to a 35-6 win over BYU. The Longhorns 7-1 overall. All right, from one Texas team to another, College Station, Texas A&M looking to overcome a two-game skid, taking on South Carolina, visiting in College Station, and some great blocking. Ruben Owens running in, 14-yard touchdown. A&M found the end zone twice in about a minute span right before half. Oh, Smith evading defender. I mean, he's wide open. That's ridiculous. Curves in and out. Oh, whoo, couldn't catch me. And that's another touchdown. Texas A&M stays on top from there, gets back in the win calm, 30 to 17. A lot of great college football action yesterday, but of course, we have some high school games. Alamo Heights cruising past Lanier, huge win. Brennan shutting down Holmes, huge victory. And New Braunfels Canyon shutting out McCarthy 40 to zero. We have all the highlights, all the scores. Just head to the BGC section of KSAT.com. Time now is 623, 75 degrees. All right, we talked football. We still gotta talk baseball. Highlights from game two of the World Series, the Diamondbacks tying the series with the Rangers. Good morning, welcome back. We talk football, time to talk baseball. We have the Diamondbacks, we have the Rangers. World Series all tied up after Arizona coming back strong in game two last night. All right, let's take a look. Diamondback pitcher, oh, Merrill Kelly. I mean, he was fantastic. Through seven innings, he struck out nine players, walked no one, allowed only one run in the fifth inning. A home run by Mitch Garver, and that would be Texas' only score in the entire game. The Diamondbacks, though, scoring seven runs in the last three innings, and they went on to win the game 9-1, to one. so it's all tied up. Game three of the World Series heading to Arizona tomorrow night. That could serve the Rangers well, seeing that they won all eight of their road games this postseason, equaling a major league record. All right, we have some great games today. We're going to start with the NFL. 
Texans, C.J. Stroud looking fantastic, possible coach of the year there as well. Taking on the Panthers, we, we could have had the number one versus the number two pick, but that's not going to happen. And then, of course, still at noon, we got Rams and how about them Cowboys? But the real story we want to talk about, Wemby, look at this. Spurs back under the national spotlight. NBA TV televising the Spurs, Clippers tonight, tip-off, 8 p.m. in Los Angeles. And yes, Kawhi v. Wemby. We'll see how that plays out. Spurs 1-1 one one in the season after their big win over the Rockets in overtime on Friday night. Time now, 628, 75 degrees. Don't go anywhere. We have so much news. And, of course, your weather with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. It is Sunday, October 29th. Yesterday, it was hot, humid. But Sarah Spivey, you're telling us winter is coming with a vengeance. Yeah, you know, it is that time of year where you look at a temperature map and you can see a crazy difference from a cold front moving through uh, Texas as we speak. Take a look at where that front is right now. You can see that it's even bringing some ice across parts of the panhandle. We're not expecting ice in San Antonio, but again, a big temperature drop expected for us. Take a look at these temperatures right now across the state. 48 in Dallas, 40 in Abilene, 28 in Amarillo. It is still in the mid 70s in San Antonio. It feels like a summer morning out there right now, but not for long. That front is expected to arrive to San Antonio shortly after lunch. So a lot of people are going to be out and about enjoying activities outside today. Huertos Fest temperatures are going to fall quickly in the afternoon. So make sure you bring the jacket wherever you're going today, because even though you don't need it now, that front will hit. It will become windy. Temperatures falling in to the 40s by 9 p.m. tonight, and they're going to stay in the 40s all day tomorrow and most of the day on Tuesday as well. But we do have to talk about a few showers out there right now. Only isolated rain in areas like out east toward Hallettsville. We're seeing some isolated rain there near Gonzalez and Cuero as well. And then closer to the San Antonio metro area in Comal County, just north of Bulverde there along 281, we've got a shower moving through Canyon Lake as well. And in to parts of Hayes County. Now rain today will only be isolated. It isn't until tonight that we start to see our rain chances pick up. So here's what you need to know. Temperatures today in the 50s this afternoon, 40s tonight. Winds will be gusting up to 40 to 45 miles per hour tonight and rain will pick up tonight and tomorrow. A lot to unpack in the forecast, including your trick or treating forecast details coming up. Max. Sarah, new this morning, a possible case of vehicles being broken into in a north side neighborhood. Well, it turns into a shooting. So take a look. This all unfolded just before 2 a.m. San Antonio police telling us they got a call for two men trying to break into multiple vehicles on New Rock Drive. It's a neighborhood near I-10 and Colony Drive. When officers got to the location, they found two men, one who had apparently shot himself in the leg by accident. Now, he was taken to the hospital for treatment. The other suspect taken into custody for questioning. Police did search the area for any vehicles that had been broken into. Unclear if they discovered anything. And a party interrupted by gunfire last night. We now know two people dead, three more injured. This happened at a home on Roslyn Avenue. Police on the scene telling us it all began with an argument and a fight between two different families. Investigators still trying to figure out who exactly started the gunfire, who was at fault. But we do know five people were shot of those like we told you, two dead, three injured. Now, the names and ages of those victims not yet released. We are all told that one of the victims under the age of 18 years old. And at last check, police do have a suspect in custody. They say they may have been involved in the shooting, but right now, clearly this investigation is underway. So stay with us on air and online as more details come out. Well, top stories this morning. San Antonio police investigating a shooting that happened yesterday afternoon at the Ferris Athletic Complex right before kickoff at a local high school football game. So Northside ISD is saying a woman was acting aggressively while parked in outside the stadium. Now, a school police officer noticed her behavior, said she became belligerent towards the officer, actually drove the vehicle towards him in what they described as a threatening manner. The officer drew his weapon, shot the woman in the arm. That officer since been placed on administrative duty as this investigation is underway. The woman is expected to be OK. Luckily, no students involved in the shooting. The game did go on as planned and SAPD is handling this investigation. Well, after months of planning, the Uvalde community finally able to see the groundbreaking of what could be the new elementary school. Take a look. Yesterday marked a new chapter in the community's journey forward. 
after that shooting at Robb Elementary School in May of last year. Remember that shooting ending with 19 children and two teachers shot and killed. Initially, the groundbreaking for the new elementary school was planned for the summer, but the executive director of the Uvalde CISD Moving Forward Foundation explained that there were delays in the bidding process. At this point, at that point, the foundation and its partners have raised 75% of the funds needed to build the new school. They're still looking for further donations. The school is being built with safety at the forefront. Families of the 21 killed, they want the community to remember the reason that Uvalde is getting this new school and the reason still rooted in that tragedy. We have to remember why we're here. And um, I could just picture Amory being excited if she was able to attend this beautiful school. Yeah, the committee still working on coming up with a name for the new school. As long as construction goes on as planned, students will be able to attend the new school for the 2025-26 school year. In your morning headlines, Israel has begun what Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu calls the nation's second stage in the war against the terrorist organization Hamas. Now, Israel ground forces moving into Gaza while also expanding attacks from the skies. IDF says several Hamas commanders were killed as part of the expanded offensive. They say they hit 150 underground targets in the northern Gaza Strip yesterday morning. Netanyahu also meeting with family members. of Some of the more than 220 people believed to still be held hostage in Gaza by Hamas. And Netanyahu says that Israel is determined to get back all of the hostages, saying that this ground operation, that will help in the mission. Well, a candlelight vigil held last night in Maine, in the town of Lewiston, mourning the loss of 18 people who were shot and killed on Wednesday night. The body of the suspected mass shooter, 40-year-old Robert Card, found Friday dead from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. This, after the state was on high alert, a 48-hour manhunt. His body found inside a trailer near a recycling center in Lisbon where Card used to work. Authorities say they had searched and cleared that location twice. We're also learning more about a note left behind by the, uh, the suspect that included phone passcodes, bank account information, and much more about his life. Investigators say they tried to access the phone and the bank accounts through a search warrant, hoping to find more clues. What would prompt anyone to do such a thing? Well, the actor best known for his character of Chandler on the 90s sitcom Friends has died. A death investigation still underway after Matthew Perry found dead in his home in Los Angeles. Investigators not saying exactly how Perry died, but did say drugs were not found on the scene and foul play is not suspected. Time now, 638, 74 degrees. We have a lot more to come here on GMSA. So when we come back, a look at how one of the main items seen on altars during Dia de los Muertos, Pan de Muerte, Muerto is made. And speaking of Muerto Fest, well, taking a live look out there, 74 degrees now. It is hot and humid to start the day, but we are going to see a huge change in the weather in just a few hours. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few minutes. As we celebrate the spirits of our loved ones on Dia de los Muertos, one important offering on altars is Pan de Muerto. So we've come to the heart of the west side to see how it's made. with Edna, the owner of Panifico Bake Shop, and Amelia, who is the head baker here. And we have all the ingredients for Pan de Muerto, which is very important for Dia de los Muertos. We have our wet ingredients here. So what do we have in here? We have the milk, we have eggs, we have uh, water, and then uh, we put the orange essence. Orange? Why orange essence? Why is that so important? The reason why that's so important is because that um, symbolizes the peace and the happiness that you had when with that person when they were alive. We also put in orange zest, orange peel. Amelia, what's next? Just want to give it a little quick stir. Look at you in the details. That's, that's important. It's all in the details. Yes. Edna. No wonder y'all use a mixer. Yes. <laughs> yes. This is, this is quite. Technology is a great uh, arm, arm saver. Okay, see, that's how you were supposed to do it. Look at that. All right, Amelia, we're here at the mixer. What goes first? Our base. We're gonna add our margarine. 
here, I'm adding the sugar. So this is live active yeast. So this is called the window test. This is what okay. I was taught. This is when you know that the dough is ready. We'll have this clear view of the dough while it is not breaking. So now that we've got the dough, you gotta work fast because of the yeast and it rising. you start making pan de muerto? Honestly, when we took over the bakery in 2005, that's when I started learning the whole process. What are the different shapes and what are the most popular for y'all and maybe if people were to make them at home? The round traditional. That With has the their, bones yes, on them? The uh -huh. bones. Is pan de muerto part of that, you know, feeding of those spirits when they come back. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to represent, is, is to kind of nourish the soul because the journey was long and, it's, and it's, it was a long journey and so this is what's, what's one of the things that's put on the altar to, to nourish them. In addition to what was, you know, used to be their, their favorite foods and their favorite drink when they were alive. We're doing the little mini figurines, correct? Yes. Pat it down a little bit. We're going to cut down maybe about halfway. We're going to cut slanted down the cross, its little arm. So the next stage is we're going to start decorating them, correct? Yes. Okay. I love sprinkles. <laughs> Well, there you have it, the many different ways you can make pan de muerto. We've got the traditional round. These are the plain. We've got the sugar, the ones that are covered in sugar, and of course the figurines, which could represent your loved ones. And then we have the mini figurines. Edna, thank you so much for letting us invade your bake shop here. This is wonderful. And Amelia, thank you for teaching us how to do it. So let's take a little taste. I've got the plain one here. Grab a little piece. Let's see. <laughs> Oh yeah, I can definitely taste that orange. Very important for pan de muerto. I want to see you crunch one of those. Okay. You said you wanted sprinkles. Should I just take a bite out of it? I'm sorry. Definitely. The sprinkles make the difference. The sprinkles make the difference. Perfect. Just, just bravo, David Hurtado. All right, so if you want to get your hands on some pan de muerto, for yourself, head over to there we go, Panifico Bake Shop. Call ahead because they have a limited amount of the traditional. Oh, I mean, it looked delicious, Sarah. I'm gonna be honest with you. Everything you need to know on your screen right now. I'm a little upset with David though. He didn't bring us any samples. I know, come on, David. Well, today is gonna be a, a day of change for us. Okay. Uh, okay, outside right now, it feels muggy, it feels humid, but by this evening, max temperatures are gonna be in the 40s. <sighs> Wind chills tomorrow morning. And it's 74 right now? It is 74 oh right now. Okay, goodness. we've got a lot to talk about. First, let's go ahead and take a look at the weather setup. You can see there's a few showers in Comal County and out east toward uh, Lavaca County and Gonzales. But as we take a look at the wider setup, you can see very clearly where that cold front is. Behind this cold front, we have got rain and we have got some ice across parts of the panhandle. We're not going to see ice in San Antonio. Don't want you to worry about that. What I want you to see here is the rain is occurring behind the front. So we're going to see the front move through today, but we're really not going to see more widespread rain until tonight and tomorrow. Take a look at temperatures falling as we speak across the state. 59 at Fort Stockton, Stockton where the front has just moved through. 40 in Midland, Odessa. 40 in Abilene. 28 degrees in Amarillo. Here's the timing of the cold front depending on where you live. Up in the hill country, that front is going to arrive this morning before lunch. So you're going to feel the temperature drop sooner than those of us in San Antonio. Those of us around the San Antonio area, front is going to move through between about 1 and 3 p.m. So as you're out and about today, you won't need the jacket for the first part 
part of the day, but in the second part of the day, you're definitely going to want the jacket. Late arrival of the cool front to areas like Beeville, Catula, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Here's a, fo a focused forecast for San Antonio area, your KSAT 12 hour forecast. Through noon, we're going to be warm. We're going to be near 78 degrees right around 1 o'clock. Uh, until the front moves through, there could be an isolated shower. That front will move through between 1 and 3 p.m. Temperatures will instantly drop and winds will pick up. We're going to see winds from the northeast sustained at about 20 miles per hour. By 5 p.m., we're going to be in the 50s. By 8 p.m., we're going to be getting into the 40s. It's going to be windy all night. And notice that it isn't until later tonight that we start to see our rain chances really pick up around San Antonio. One or two isolated before the evening, yes, but it's in the evening hours that the rain chances really pick up. And late tonight and tomorrow morning, wind gusts are going to be the strongest. We could see wind gusts of up to about 40 miles per hour. This is a look at tonight and early tomorrow morning. So early tomorrow morning, Make sure those kids are bundled up for the bus stop because it's going to be blustery and a cold and we could even see some rain as well in the morning hours. In fact, that's when rain chances are really expected to pick up late tonight, early tomorrow. That's when rain is expected to be around light rain primarily, but rain nonetheless. And, and let me show you that here on the future cast overlaid temperatures on here too. So today the big story is the drop in temperatures in the afternoon and the pickup of the winds. Tonight, it's going to be rain and cold air uh, out there. This is a look at overnight tonight while you're sleeping. Two o'clock in the morning, temperatures in the 40s in San Antonio, upper 30s in the Hill Country, and notice how the rain becomes a little bit more widespread overnight tonight. Then early tomorrow morning, blustery with some light rain, 42 degrees, and temperatures will stay in the 40s all day long tomorrow. Wind chills. What it feels like outside going to be close to 34 in San Antonio 20s in the hill country. You're not going to have to worry about a freeze. That's the wind chill what it feels like outside. So as for trick or treating, though, things are going to clear out for us for Tuesday. However, it's still going to be chilly. Dress warm. Temperatures will be near 50 degrees. Winds will be subsiding from the north at 10 to 15 and there will not be any rain during trick or treating. So that's good news. Clearing sky just bundle up. Take a look at this forecast all together. Again, tomorrow is going to be a raw, cold day. Light rain, temperatures in the 40s, wind chills in the 30s. Tuesday, we're going to be clearing out in the 50s in the afternoon, but chilly for trick or treating. And then last thing I want to point out here on the forecast, take a look at Wednesday morning's low. 36 in San Antonio, but I do think we will have a light freeze in the hill country in the higher elevations. So take that into consideration as you're planning your week ahead. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Time is 6.51, 74 degrees now, but clearly it's changing. Let's take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, 906, fireball seven, daily four, 9250, fireball zero. All right, cash five, three, 12, 17, 28, 31. Lotto Texas, 9, 15, 23, 28, 31, and 36. And the big one, Powerball, 14, 24, 50, 59, 64. Powerball 2, Power Play 2. Good luck. Good morning. Welcome back. So the North San Antonio Chamber of Commerce has a new president and CEO. And today on Leading SA at 8 a.m., He's going to be joining us live. You may have a lot of questions, so you can submit those questions right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Submit the questions. Join us at 8 a.m., but right now we are set to talk about the mission of the North Chamber, goals as the new president and CEO, challenges that local businesses might face in the upcoming year, and expansion of not only San Antonio, but specifically the north side of San Antonio, and, of course, the economic outlook of the next year. So we are going to take an hour-long break for GMA. But 8 a.m. leading SA. We still have more news to come in just a few moments. Time now, 6.55, 74 degrees. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. So Halloween just a couple of days away and some NICU babies at Christus Children's. They are getting into the Halloween spirit. Take a look at some of the adorable costumes. Aw, Wemby. That's awesome. We got a Wemby costume already. The ice cream. Aww, ice cream. <laughs> so cute. Oh, formerly known as the Children's Hospital of San Antonio, it is located right downtown on North Santa Rosa. 
Hospital also celebrating Halloween on the day with its patients who can't go trick-or-treating, allowing them to do it through the lobby. Look at the Barbie box. Fantastic. Oh, I don't know why I'm tearing up. These are Aww. so cute. Oh, my goodness. Okay, well, we are going to have a weather whiplash. Temperatures falling quickly today. After about 1 p.m., we'll be in the 40s by tonight, and it is going to be windy. Wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour as we see rain continue overnight and into tomorrow. Highs only in the 40s tomorrow. Bundle up those kids. We're going to see wind chill up to about uh, down to about 30 degrees in places out there. At least Halloween looks good for trick-or-treating. You're just going to need to bundle up because it's still going to be cold after after sunset a very end of October early November week ahead with temperatures pretty chilly all right we are gonna take an hour-long break for good morning America don't go anywhere we'll see you back here 8 a.m. live from case at 12 good morning San Antonio starts right now all right we are starting off with a live look out at the Alamo City the Sun is up the clouds apparently are out as well 74 degrees now Oh, but as we've been saying through the morning, it's going to be a big change through today into tomorrow. Good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Sunday. Thank you so hey, much for morning. starting your morning with us. So yesterday, the sun was out, the heat was up. Yeah. And today, we're starting off mean and muggy. But you're saying around 4 or 5 o'clock, a dramatic change. Absolutely. We're going to see temperatures quickly drop. So a lot of people out and about enjoying Muertos Fest this weekend. Sarah Costa included. That's why she's not here with us. Uh, but we are going to be seeing a quick temperature drop. So please just be prepared today if you are out and about for that temperature drop. There's where the cold front is right now, working its way through San Angelo. You can see that there's plenty of rain behind that front. It's 45 in Dallas and 49 in Fort Stockton. That front is about to move through Junction area. It's pushing through Mason, Texas. We're going to be seeing it here in San Antonio by about two, three o'clock in the afternoon. So here's a look at what happens to temperatures today. The first half of the day, warm, humid. Temperatures in the 80s even this afternoon as a possibility. Then that front hits and we drop down into the 60s in the afternoon, into the 50s around dinner time. And by the end of the day, temperatures are going to be in the 40s and it is going to be very windy. So if you're going to be out and about later on today, uh, please make sure to take that jacket with you because again, you'll need it by about three o'clock this afternoon. Outside right now, though, again, more of the same humid 74 degrees uh, south winds at about 10 miles per hour. We've even got some areas of light rain showers right now. One shower in particular moving through Kennedy, Carn City and close to Falls City around the San Antonio metro area. A few isolated showers up near Bernie and out near Canyon Lake as well. Uh, and again, that front is not going to hit until this afternoon, but when it does so, here's what you need to know. Temperatures will fall into the 60s this afternoon, 40s by tonight and tomorrow. A big thing too are going to be the winds. Winds could potentially gust up to 40 to 45 miles per hour tonight and early tomorrow. Those are very windy conditions. Be mindful of those lightweight Halloween decorations. And as far as rain goes, some isolated rain today, but it does look like we'll see more widespread rain late tonight and into tomorrow as well. So there's a lot to unpack in the forecast. I'm going to walk you through an hour by hour forecast for South Central Texas when that cold air will hit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, we know two people are dead, three more injured after a party turned into a shooting. So take a look. This was a home on Roslyn Avenue. Police on the scene telling us it started with an argument between two families and police say they're still trying to figure out who exactly is at fault, who pulled out the gun and started shooting first. Five people in total shot, two dead, three injured. The names and ages of those victims not yet been released. We are told that one of the victims, under 18 years old, police do have a suspect in custody who may have been involved in the shooting, but right now, as you can see, everything's still under investigation. We do expect more details through the morning, so make sure to stay with us on air and online as that information becomes available. And another shooting to tell you about a Saturday football game turning into a crime scene after a Northside Independent School District police officer shot a woman just outside Ferris Athletic Complex. Now that officer saying they shot reportedly in self-defense. Our Avery Everett speaking to families who were in the stands saying they didn't even know the gunfire happened. With the bands playing and the stadium packed, like Jesse Sills says his focus Saturday afternoon 
was on O'Connor and Sotomayor's high school football game. No, no clue at all. I was played on like, like, like normal. But just outside the stadium, right before kickoff, was a shooting. <laughs> we're shocked right now that we were that close to an yes. incident like that. A Northside Independent School District police officer shot a woman outside the Ferris Athletic Complex, hitting her arm. Yeah. My granddaughter's on the pep squad, and we're just yes. like, we think you're safe. You think you're in a safe yeah. environment, but. In an emailed statement, an NISD spokesperson says that officer fired one round and shot the woman after she was acting in a, quote, belligerent and aggressive manner while in her vehicle. The statement says the woman was driving in a, quote, threatening manner toward one officer. But it's something the SEALs and other families sitting in the stands say they only learned after the game was over. I mean, after the game, somebody, this was locked down and... Yeah, that's very surprising. Several sources tell me the woman has connections to Sotomayor High School. Those sources are NISD employees who asked to remain anonymous. They say going into the game, they had no confirmed information from the district about what happened and why. One even saying, quote, this was grossly mishandled. In its statement, NISD says no students or families were in danger with the shooting. That officer is now on administrative duty pending an investigation. Still, those employees and families say they were left in the dark. It would be nice to know. The game now over, but families say they're far from feeling any high school spirit. We know somebody was actually getting shot here. That woman was sent to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. SAPD is also conducting its own investigation as to what happened. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Well, the North San Antonio Chamber of Commerce represents more than 900 businesses from really every area of the city, and there's a wide range of industries, healthcare, biotech, energy, telecommunications, and seemingly every industry in between. The North Chamber has a new president and CEO, Brett Finley, named to the role just this week, and he joins us live for a leading essay this morning. Good morning, Mr. Finley. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Hey, good morning, Max. Thanks so much for having me. Right off the bat, what is the mission of the North Chamber? Yeah, the mission of the North San Antonio Chamber of Commerce is to promote economic vitality for our members through free market advocacy, leadership development, and business empowerment. At the core of our, our chamber's commitment lies really its unwavering focus on membership engagement. We place a strong emphasis on workforce development and leadership initiatives through our renowned programs. These programs, Max, really play a pivotal role in shaping business professionals who are then ready to navigate uh, an ever-changing dynamic landscape here in San Antonio. I think ultimately, you know, we want to promote a thriving business environment here in San Antonio, uh, ultimately enhancing the quality of life of all of its residents. And it definitely has been a thriving business environment, especially over the last few years. Well, look, it, it was an arduous process to become the new president and CEO. So what are the goals now that you uh, you have the reign? Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's an opportunity like no other. And I really believe my goals should align with the organization's mission and the needs of its members and the community. Um, we're an advocacy organization, first and foremost. We want to be a unified voice for the business community. Uh, so we must continue to monitor and address uh, legislative and regulatory issues that, that impact our members. Uh, we want to strengthen existing relationships with elected officials uh, and ensure that the chamber's voice is heard. Um, as a chamber, you know, we're known for our agility and independence. I think that really provides a, a benefit, a, a, an opportunity to pivot swiftly, being able to reinforce our support for the ever-changing needs of the business community, uh, certainly during tricky regulatory times. And, and where that support for, you know, businesses that need help with licensing requirements or health and safety code updates, um, tax exemptions, or other various business regulations, uh, we, we need to be able to uh, meet their needs along the way. Um, also, another goal of mine is, is just a foster environment that attracts and retains new businesses here, uh, bringing their companies, uh, promoting ep economic growth within the San Antonio region, being able to retain those businesses long term, uh, make sure and, and, and that economic development is, is sustained. Um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, the North Chamber really prides itself on successful um, leadership programs. The North Chamber Leadership Lab and the Innovative Leadership Program have been very successful for a number of years. Um, the sustainability of the Chamber's success, Max, over the years has really been in part because of its ability to develop its next chapter of leadership and get them into that business landscape, providing them skills through networking opportunities, other various events along the way. Um, and then I think finally, just from a community engagement and member engagement perspective, uh, you know, we have membership that represents all four corners of, of Bear County. Uh, and so I think our membership base is much more reflective than just the North side. I think our actions and activities um, throughout the year have been much more impactful than just the north side, but I think it's just enhancing that that brand visibility and that reputation 
uh, to go along with our members, I think will make for a much more meaningful impact, uh, not only on the chamber and its members, but also of all San Antonio. And you had mentioned the regulation and, and legislation. What are some challenges that our local businesses from all four corners of Bear County are facing? Yeah, we'll start with the, the obvious one, you know, the economic downturn. It's, it's inflationary times. It costs more money specifically for, I think our small businesses have been impacted the most. Um, the cost of doing business has increased, obviously. Uh, but also with changing consumer behavior too, Max, uh, where you know, we have consumers that don't have as much discretionary income uh, to be able to get out there and buy products, goods, and services, but then also consumer behavior where they're, they're much more inclined at times, the pro proliferation of online shopping, right? Um, that has certainly helped and, and, and impacted, I think, the issues that have gone about. I'm also still, still dealing with some supply chain issues, specifically in the manufacturing realm, that have been addressed, but, but could be uh, more ideal. Um, we have labor shortages. You know, there have been improvements in workforce development, but certainly finding and retaining skilled workers can be a significant challenge, uh, especially in industries like healthcare technology and hospitality industries. So we got to ensure that employees have the necessary skills and training for the jobs of the future. I think finally, uh, technology, right? We hear so much about artificial intelligence. AI has really changed the landscape for businesses. We live in a digital age. Uh, so keeping up with those technological advancements and, and implementing e-commerce solutions um, that can be challenging at times for businesses without significant IT resources, um, that, that is going to be a challenge. I think also that goes in with technology and innovation is cybersecurity. You know, we hear about cybersecurity threats and attacks happening you know, on a weekly basis across the country. Um, I think it's paramount that we make sure that our small businesses are supported in those efforts uh, to make sure that, you know, business uh, information and and customer data is protected, that networks are not easily infiltrated, and, and ransomware attacks could be, uh, you know, happen to prop up there. I'm actually glad you brought that up because we're talking to the Cybersecurity Council tomorrow. But we got about 30 seconds left, so try to keep it as concise as possible. What is the outlook for the business community here locally for the next year? There's a tremendous opportunity. I mean, we've seen developments, uh, obviously, with the San Antonio International Airport, uh, getting a NASA flight over to Frankfurt, Germany, that's going to be launching in May of 2024. We've seen their big development. I think it's really going to put San Antonio on much more of a global map, more than ever before. I know with the North San Antonio Chamber, we stand ready to partner with uh, governmental agencies, other community partners. Um, they've been so great for the last 49 years and coincidentally going to be celebrating their 50th year anniversary. I think the sustainability of the Chamber's success over the years, it's, it's the legacy that has such a rich tradition that we just want to continue to build upon. Uh, it's exciting times in San Antonio, Max, for business and industry. Uh, we, just, we just want to continue that momentum moving forward in the future. All right. Brad Finley, the new president and CEO of the North Chamber, thank you so much for joining us this morning. If anyone missed any part of the interview, you can check it out in its entirety through the morning. Just head to the Leading Essay section of KSAT.com. Time now, 812, 74 degrees. All right, it is a moment a community has been waiting for for more than a year now. The groundbreaking of a new Uvalde Elementary School happening this weekend. Coming up next, why many of those who attended are describing the day as bittersweet. And some of the talk of the morning, well, not a black screen. It is the weather. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Morning and welcome back. After months of planning, the Uvalde community able to see the groundbreaking of their new elementary school this weekend. So the day marked a new chapter in the community's journey forward after the shooting at Robb Elementary in May of 2022. Remember that shooting ended with 19 children and two teachers shot and killed. Initially, the groundbreaking was planned for this past summer, but the executive director of the Uvalde CISD Moving Forward Foundation explained that there were delays in the bidding process. At this point, the foundation and the partners, they've raised 75% of the funds needed to build the school. Still though, they're looking for more donations. The school is being built with safety at the forefront. Families of the 21 people killed want the community to remember the reason that Uvalde is getting this new school, and that reason still rooted in tragedy. We have to remember why we're here. And um, I could just picture Amory being excited if she was able to attend this beautiful school. A community is still working on coming up with a new name for the school. As long as construction goes on as planned, students could attend the new school for the 2025-26 school year. All right, it's definitely feeling like the start of a school year because, I mean, look, 74 now. Yeah. But 
will shift halfway through the day. Absolutely. It feels like a summer morning this morning, but later on this afternoon, big cold front is going to hit San Antonio, our strongest cold front yet of the season. Here's the top things you should know. Even though it's going to be humid and warm for the first part of the day, in the afternoon, temperatures will drop into the 60s. So bring the jacket with you in case you're going to be out and about this afternoon. By tonight, temperatures will be in the 40s, and that'll continue through tomorrow. Another big factor are the winds. Winds are going to pick up this afternoon, but it isn't until tonight that we'll see gusts of up to 40 to 45 miles per hour, continuing into Monday morning, too. And if you're curious about rain, rain is going to pick up tonight and tomorrow. Until tonight and tomorrow, today, during the day today, only isolated rain is expected. And you can see right now what I mean by that is as the front is moving through, most of the rain is behind this front. So after the front moves through, that's when our rain chances are expected to pick up tonight and tomorrow. There's also a little bit of ice across parts of the panhandle of Texas. We're not expecting ice in San Antonio, but that just shows you how cold this air mass is. It's 32 in Lubbock and 28 in Amarillo. Temperatures are in the 40s in Dallas, 49 at Fort Stockton. This front is sagging southward. And let me take you through the future temperatures as we walk you through. Uh, when this front will arrive. The front will arrive uh, toward Fredericksburg by about 930 this morning. Kerrville area going to be seeing the front uh, by about 11 o'clock in the morning. So hill country 11 o'clock this morning is a safe bet for you in San Antonio. It's still going to be warm by the early afternoon. 130 uh, temperatures are going to be in the 80s around San Antonio, but that front will move through shortly after 130 and temperatures will fall by three will be in the 60s around San Antonio, 62 in New Braunfels. Still warm, though, for Carissa Springs, Pleasanton, Beeville, close to 90 degrees by the early afternoon. Then as we head into the early evening hours, close to dinner time, temperatures will fall into the 50s around San Antonio, 40s in the hill country, and that's when that front is finally going to move through our southern counties right around dinner. Then in the evening hours, temperatures are going to fall late tonight into the 40s, 47 degrees in San Antonio by 10 o'clock o'clock, even in the 30s by 10 o'clock across areas in the hill country. Early tomorrow morning, you wake up. It's going to be 42 degrees in San Antonio, 30s in the hill country. There will be wind chills in the 20s in the hill country, 30s in San Antonio. We don't need to worry about a freeze, but that's how cold it's going to feel outside. And then all day tomorrow, temperatures are going to stay in the 40s. So bust out those winter coats. You're going to need them for at least uh, 48 hours. Take a look at what happens to wind gusts too. This afternoon, wind gusts after the front moves through up to about 25 to 30 miles per hour. But by tonight, that's when the winds are really going to pick up. This is a look at midnight and in the overnight hours, wind gusts up to 40 to 45 miles per hour are possible. Think about those lightweight Halloween decorations, that lightweight patio furniture outside. Make sure to tie those down or bring them inside. We're really not going to see winds subside until tomorrow afternoon when wind gusts will be down down to about 25 miles per hour. Rain chances go up late tonight into the overnight hours and continue into Monday too. That's when we'll see some light rain. Looking at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, just to reiterate everything I said for the day today, warm until that front moves through around two o'clock. That's when it'll become windy and temperatures will drop quickly. We'll be looking at the 40s by 9 p.m. And again, I just want to remind everybody tomorrow is going to be a cold and damp day. Highs will only be in the 40s Tuesday. Halloween 55 looks like we're going to clear out for trick or treating more on that forecast in the next half hour. And then one last thing I want to mention Wednesday morning 36 in San Antonio, but we could have our first freeze in the hill country, a light freeze. Well, more news for you after the break. Good morning. And welcome back. Pride Center San Antonio hosting their 10th annual trunk or treat today. It's happening from 1 to 4 p.m. It's in the lot diagonal to the Pride Center. That's right next to Crockett Park. There's going to be a lot of organizations providing information on things like counseling services, LGBTQ resources, and so much more. Kids and their families enjoy the event. They can trick or treat. And members of the Pride Center says this is an event where people can go have fun in a safe space. I just having a day, you know, like a Halloween, just a regular holiday that a lot of people celebrate and just, you know, have fun with and participate in. Um, but making it a queer affirming space for specifically queer friends and our allies. We just want to provide a space where people can just come have fun, judgment free, you know, and just let their kids get candy. 
If you do plan on stopping by, it's encouraged to wear the Halloween costume. The Trunk or Street, like we said, starts at 1 p.m. and it goes until 4. Time now, just about 826, 74 degrees. Oof, a rough day from behind the kitchen door. A west side restaurant dealing with some roaches, but that wasn't actually what put them out of business. We're going to explain what did coming up when we go behind the kitchen door. Good morning and a happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Good morning. And we are starting off at 74. Yeah, Max. It's muggy, but looking at your forecast, tomorrow is going to be a completely different situation. Oh yeah, and that's because the cold front arrives today, this afternoon. Tomorrow we're going to be in the 40s all day long, but you're going to notice a change later on this afternoon. Here's where that front is right now, pushing through central Texas. You can see that behind this front, we've even got some ice across parts of the panhandle. It's not going to ice here. I don't want you to worry about that, but take a look at temperatures up there. 27 in Amarillo and 32 in Lubbock. It's 49 in Fort Stockton, 38 in Abilene and 45 in Dallas. This front is on our door step, but it is not going to get to San Antonio until the afternoon. So keep that in mind. It's still going to be warm until the afternoon. We may even get into the 80s early this afternoon. Then that front arrives. Temperatures fall into the 60s by 3 p.m. 50s by 5 p.m. and we'll be in the 40s in the later evening hours and it is going to get windy. Think about last time we had a strong cold front. That's pretty much exactly what it's going to feel like outside. But again, we got to get through the first part of the day here and it is still very mild. It's 74 degrees outside, very humid south winds at 10 miles per hour. We've even got some isolated rain too. take a look down toward Kennedy uh, and into Wilson County there. You can see that there's an isolated shower moving from south to north through Kennedy, Carn City, and just to the east of Falls City. So here's what you need to know with that front. 60s in the afternoon after a warm start, and then 40s tonight and tomorrow. It is going to get windy tonight. We could see wind gusts from the north up to 40 to 45 miles per hour by the start of the morning tomorrow. And rain becomes more likely late tonight and early tomorrow as well. Throughout the day, we'll have a few isolated showers, but really tonight and tomorrow, that's when rain will become more widespread. We've got a lot to talk about in the forecast, including that strong cold front and what is it gonna look like for Halloween? What are you gonna need to know for trick-or-treating? Those details ahead, Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a possible case of vehicles being broken into a neighborhood on the north side, what ends in gunfire. This is what we know right now. This happened just before 2 a.m. San Antonio police got a call for two men trying to break into vehicles on New Rock Drive. It's a neighborhood near I-10 and Colony Drive. Officers arrived at the location. They found two men, but they also found one of them had apparently shot himself in the leg by accident. Now, he was taken to the hospital for treatment. The other suspect taken into custody for questioning. Police did search the area for any vehicles that may have been broken into. We are still waiting to learn the details if there were any discovery. And new this morning, 30-year-old Isaac Jerome Sheridan charged with murder. According to arrest records, Sheridan shot and killed his cousin over a, quote, civil matter, end quote. Now, this shooting happened back in April. It unfolded in the 4900 block of Zulema Avenue. It's near Old Highway 90 West and Highway 151. A police spoke with witnesses who say they saw Sheridan leaving the scene and surveillance video captured the shooting. His bond now set at $250,000. Well, San Antonio police still investigating what caused a deadly rollover crash that ended the life of a 20 year old woman. So it happened Friday morning around 430 AM on I 35 South near West Ainsley Boulevard on the city South side. Officers say the woman was driving a Toyota Solora. That's when it went off the road onto the grass median rolled several times before she was ejected from the vehicle. We are still waiting to learn the identity of the person. Now to the latest in the Middle East, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says his country's war against the terrorist organization Hamas, it's entered the second stage. Now Israel Defense Forces now keying in on several targets across Gaza, dispatching tr troops as part of the expanded ground offensive. ABC's Justin Finch has the details. Overnight in Gaza, a series of bright blasts across the dark skies. Unrelenting airstrikes as Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu confirms Israel's war against Hamas has entered a new phase. 
In a televised address to the Israeli people, the Prime Minister saying, we will fight for our native land, we will fight and won't back down. Israel bolstering its offensive, striking Hamas from the air, the sea and on the ground, and claiming 150 underground Hamas targets are now destroyed. Netanyahu saying the fight will only intensify in preparation for a broad ground invasion into Gaza a Hamas official promising a fight. I think he will achieve nothing on the ground. But Israel claiming it's killed several Hamas leaders, including a commander who oversaw paraglider operations during Hamas's deadly October 7th terrorist attack on Israel. Across the Gaza Strip, concerns about a worsening humanitarian crisis. Neighborhoods now reduced to rubble. The growing number of injured overwhelming hospitals. Unidentified sources say the Internet has been restored in some areas. Food and fuel supplies running low. The United Nations reporting a crowd of thousands broke into Gaza warehouses Sunday, taking food and basic survival items. Meantime, Israel believes Hamas is holding more than 200 hostages in Gaza. The White House also working with Israel and partners in the region to secure the release of those hostages. The Biden administration saying Israel should support a humanitarian pause if it leads to freeing hostages. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. And back here in the United States, the town of Lewiston, Maine, they are mourning the loss of 18 people who were shot and killed this past Wednesday. And last night, the people of Maine holding a candlelight vigil, remembering those who were killed. As for who's responsible, well, the body of the suspected mass shooter, 40-year-old Robert Card, was found Friday night dead from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. This, after a 48-hour manhunt, put the state on notice. Now, his body found inside a trailer near a recycling center in Lisbon, where the suspect used to work. Investigators say they're still trying to access the suspect's phone and bank accounts through search warrants, hoping to find more clues, more clues on what could have motivated such an attack. Well, the actor best known for his character Chandler on the 90s sitcom Friends has died. A death investigation is now underway after Matthew Perry found dead at his home in Los Angeles. Investigators not saying how Perry died exactly. TMZ reporting, though, that he drowned in a jacuzzi. Investigators say no drugs were found at the scene and foul play is not suspected. Last year, the 54-year-old actor wrote in a memoir how he battled with drug and alcohol addiction for years. Well, back here in San Antonio, a low score on a recent health inspection, really the least of the problems, or a West Side Mongolian grill. Here's a look at what KSAT's Tim Gerber found when he went behind the kitchen door. Genghis Grill, formerly located in the 8600 block of State Highway 151, got a 77 on a late August health inspection that included six repeat violations. Multiple dead roaches were found in numerous traps around the business. The buffet cold hold was too warm. The dishwashing machine had zero sanitizer. The bar area didn't have any hot water and was shut down by the inspector. When I stopped by this week, I learned the restaurant was no longer in operation. This letter posted on the front door stated they were evicted for not paying rent. The landlord was in the process of clearing the place out. The landlord said there were still roaches inside and she hoped to have a new tenant once everything is cleaned up. <laughs> Gibby's La Cucina, located in the 2600 block of Nogalito Street, got a failing score of 69 on their August 30th inspection. Hair was found in the sugar. It was removed. Clean utensils were being stored in dirty containers. A worker touched the floor, then touched food prep areas. The inspector stepped in and asked them to wash their hands. They were storing bread into go-style bags. The mop sink was clogged and unusable, while another sink didn't have cold water. A roach was seen along a wall, and there was a buildup of grease on a vent hood. A reinspection was required. The business was not open when I stopped by this week, and a posting online showed they were temporarily closed. <laughs> Jim's Coffee Shop, located in the 8400 block of Broadway, earned an 85 on their late August inspection. The score was a departure from previous scores in the high 90s. According to this report, it appears they were dealing with a roach problem at the time. 
An uncovered mix used to batter chicken was contaminated by a roach. The inspector wrote there was a significant amount of cockroaches at different life stages throughout the establishment. The report shows the business was actively receiving pest control services. The floors were also dirty with grease and food debris. We're behind the kitchen door. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. Time now, 839, 74 degrees out. Honoring those hit and killed by drivers here in San Antonio. Coming up next, we're going to show you how the cycling community and family members of those who were killed are raising awareness using altars to honor their loved ones' memories. And if you do plan to head out to Muertos Fest today, bring a jacket. We know it's warm, it's muggy, it's humid right now, but that's going to change through the day. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Martos Festival. His way to work, he was run over by a careless driver. He was on his bike on his way to work. Fernando was 42 years old and had been a deputy with the Hayes County Sheriff's Office for 15 years. He loved to bike, but loved his family more, taking care of all of his siblings. He was like a father to me. He always made sure that we were taken care of. It's why for the past several years, Amaya puts an altar together for her older brother with special care to honor and remember him, but also to raise awareness for the many other cyclists who get killed each year in our area by drivers. She isn't alone. SATX Social Ride, a bike riding group that promotes safe social riding, has also made an altar for the many members of the community that have been killed while cycling. On average, we lose four or five people a year to cycling incidents in, in traffic. The organization partnered with Hill Country Ghost Bikes, a group that makes bike memorials at the sites of crashes to make one large altar for the dozens of community members killed while riding. Well, we have one person uh, who is six years old on up to, to 70 year old people. They hope these altars remember their loved ones, but also remind drivers to be vigilant for cyclists on the roads. It's very important that we put a human face uh, for the community to see who cyclists really are. Look out for the cyclists, look out for the people walking, just so that those people don't have to go through the what we're going through. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. So look, we know a lot of people are gonna be out and about for Muertos yeah. Fest today. They need to bring a jacket. I know when you look at the screen or you step outside right now, you're like, right. what jacket would I need? But it's changing. Exactly. A front is going to hit in the early afternoon hours, and a lot of what's happening at Muertos Fest today is in the evening. In the evening hours, it's going to be in the 50s and 40s. Yeah, so we are uh, expecting this cold front to move through today. It is cold front day. Right now, we've really only got a few showers, though, out in Carnes and uh, Wilson counties right now, and an isolated shower out in Kendall County too. But as you take a wider view here, here's where that cold front is. Notice and what I want you to notice here is that the rain is behind the front. So we're really not going to see more widespread rain until after the front has moved through. Our best chance for widespread rain is late tonight and tomorrow after the front has already moved through Texas. And that front is currently moving through Junction. Just about five minutes ago, Junction was in the 70s. Now Junction is in the 60s. Behind this front, 37 in Midland, 38 in Abilene, below freezing in the panhandle of Texas and Amarillo and in Lubbock. This is one of those days where we're going to have a massive temperature spread across the state of Texas. Brownsville expected to get into the 90s today and Amarillo going to stay near freezing. When is the front going to move through your neighborhood? Well, here's a look at the front arrival times in the Hill Country. Uh, we'll be looking at the front arriving between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. That's when you can expect that temperature drop here in San Antonio. It's not until 1 to 3 p.m. that we expect that temperature drop. So until then, it's going to be warm even later for areas south and east of San Antonio, closer to Floresville, Beeville, Catula area 3 to 6 p.m. So for San Antonio, let's show a focused forecast in the next 12 hours. 10, 11, noon, 1, it's going to be warm. We're going to be looking at temperatures climbing to the low 80s, south winds, humid, and an isolated shower. Then that front hits between 1 to 3 p.m. 
Temperatures quickly fall into the 60s first and eventually into the 50s by the evening by dinner time. It's also going to get windy. Winds are going to pick up from the north at 15 to 20 miles per hour. Notice that rain chances really don't increase all that much until much later tonight when we'll see overnight chance for rain and that's when temperatures are also going to be falling into the 50s. So if you have late evening plans tonight, we're going to be in the 40s and 50s. Bring the jacket with you. Winds are going to be gusty from the north at about 30 miles per hour. Later on tonight and into early tomorrow morning, winds are going to gust up to 40 miles per hour. It is going to be a very windy start to the day tomorrow. Keep in mind if you've got lightweight Halloween decorations, if you've got lightweight patio furniture, take a moment right now to secure those because overnight tonight, that's when the winds are really going to pick up and rain chances are going to pick up overnight too. Starting at around 9 p.m. and lasting through the overnight hours into tomorrow, some light rain is expected. So let me show you that here on the future cast. This is around noon when the front will be moving through the hill country. A few isolated showers are possible, but the big story today is the temperature drop and the winds picking up. That's the big story today. Tonight, that becomes cold rain overnight tonight. Again, areas of light rain. You can see that picking up here on the future cast overnight while we're sleeping and then early tomorrow morning bundle the kids up 42 degrees with some areas of light rain that is cold. The light rain will gradually taper off during the day tomorrow, but we're going to stay in the 40s and another thing I want to note early tomorrow morning wind chills what it feels like outside because of the winds 20s in the hill country 30s around San Antonio. It's not going to freeze overnight, but that's just what it's going to feel like. Now, what about trick or treating? Here's the good news for Halloween. Rain is expected to clear out, but it's still going to be cold near 50 degrees. So dress those kiddos warm. Then winds will be subsiding by trick or treating still breezy from the north at 10 to 15. And here's the good news. It'll be dry with a clearing sky, so no rain while the kids are trick-or-treating so all you really have to worry about is bundling them up from the chilly weather look at the forecast <laughs> 80 today 40s tomorrow and windy by tuesday we'll be clearing 55 degrees but chilly for trick-or-treating and then max one thing i want to point out here is wednesday morning the low in san antonio will be 36 but we will probably have our first light freeze across the hill country on wednesday morning so all my gardening friends out there plan for if you have sensitive vegetation early Wednesday morning in the hill country, there could be a light freeze. Otherwise, temperatures are going to rebound nicely and it's going to be comfortable for the second half of the week. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Yeah. Time now, 850, 74 degrees. We'll be right back. The altar uh, or altar is a very important piece of the Dia de los Muertos. And at Mi Tierra, the altars honoring the dead remain on display all year long. As you can see, we have some, some very important politicians here and some of our employees, past employees, uh, they're on the altar as well. Just about anybody that can bring us a picture will go onto the altar. Whether it's Selena's altar or one of the many others, you'll notice some similarities. The altar is two tiers, three tiers, or seven tiers. There are different, different altars with different purposes. And uh, what it consists of, first you have to have a religious figure. You have to have the picture or pictures of the person that you are honoring. Uh, candles, papel picado, of course, their favorite food or drink, salt, and um, the pan de muerto, of course, as a big, big uh, part of the altar. And it is round, if you can see this, this bread right here is round because we believe our soul is round. And it, it, this decorations it show the bones of, of the um, skeleton. So we have the marigolds, we have the, uh, the, the water. You know, we have an opportunity not just to, to preserve, but really to, to teach our, our culture to our guests. Everybody that comes here, and we get to talk about the tradition. Um, they're all, everybody loves it, everybody falls in love with it. 
Okay, we just got the pollen count in for the day. Molds have fallen from yesterday. They were very high. They're high today, though. Ragweed and grass are low. It'll be interesting to see how this cold front changes the pollen count. For the first half of the day here, it is going to be warm. Don't expect the front to arrive until 1 to 3 p.m. When it does so, you'll notice the instant hit of colder air. Temperatures will fall. It'll be in the 50s by dinner time, 40s in the later evening, and it'll get windy, too. Then we see rain pick up tonight and tomorrow. Not too much in, in the way of accumulation, but it is going to make for a damp, blustery, cold day tomorrow. Highs will only be in the 40s. Things will clear out a little on Tuesday. We'll get up to 55, but it's still going to be chilly for trick-or-treating. Then a light freeze possible in the hill country on Wednesday, and temperatures moderate back into the 60s and 70s. That's time of year. We're here for you. Make sure to have the KSAT Weather Authority app.